Hello and welcome to Kalem Kirk Web Worship. Today, we don't have a big reading, just a single verse. Well known, very familiar. But because it's so familiar, we can often overlook its richness. John 3.16 says that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Our focus on that can often be on us, if we believe in God. But we need to unpack the whole verse. It starts <coughs> with an assertion. God loved the world so much. God's attitude to us, to his creation, to the wonder of his world, is absolute love before and above everything, before any events, before any circumstances, God's attitude towards us is love. And because of that, for God loved the world so much, he gave his only son. So God puts his attitude into action. He gave us Jesus. To be his present presence with us. To step into history just for a moment. And to demonstrate what life in love, in connection with God is like. It is only after this that we are invited to respond. God's attitude and action should provoke a response in us that whoever believes in him whoever believes in him and belief and faith <coughs> can be very difficult in challenging times such as this we feel somehow the victim we feel somehow that, that we're being overlooked downtrodden but that doesn't hold true with what the verse says. For God loved the world so much because of his love, he gave his son. And we are asked to respond to that. Not the events that are happening around us, but to God's foundational love. It is there for always and for all. And as we do, we are promised life in its fullness life that doesn't come to an end we can think of eternal life as some pie in the sky when you when you die idea but that that is such a superficial reading of what this means fullness of life is for the now not in the here for after it's for today not for the sweet by and by and so we can bring our anxieties, we can bring our fears, we can bring our triumphs, we can bring our joys and put them all before God and share them and say thank you. So when we consider that one verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you hear your own name echoing in the background? Do you hear your own life story being embraced by the God who loves you? Perhaps now is a time to reflect. To listen, to hear what God might be saying even through these circumstances of his love and his care, not just for you but for all. As we take time to reflect, to pray, 
rather than be too prescriptive in that. I invite you at some point today, go to a window. Go to the window and look out and pray for what you see. If you see other houses, <coughs> pray for the families. Pray for those who are feeling isolated, cut off and alone just now. Pray for your street. <coughs> Excuse me. Pray for your community. Pray for our nation and the world. In your imagination, walk your streets. Pray for the businesses. Pray for the groups that can't meet. Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. It's okay. But if we do that, rather than feel stuck in wherever you are, we can push back the walls, the windows of our homes and embrace the world. So at some point, go to a window, have a look. If all you see is countryside, then pray for the farmers. Pray for those who are trying to keep the food supplies open and running. Our supermarkets, our shopkeepers. Take time just to pray. I want to share one song with you. <coughs> My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who of my disgrace and gave me life again who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me with his light and wrote his law of righteousness with power So as we try to love and follow him wherever we are, may we find his love already there in great abundance. May we find his comfort and peace holding us, securing us and granting us hope now and always. <coughs>